Take you out soon, bud. Yeah. Welcome back to my Sunday series. This week we're gonna work on a wagon wheel pull setup, but first I'm gonna clean my tack with this Mary's Botanicals all-in-one cleaner. I've been using it for a couple months now on my saddle, on my bridle, on my girth, and I love it. It keeps my saddle nice and soft and it doesn't leave any residue or anything. It's perfect for what I need it to do. While I cleaned my tack, I turned Happy out so he could get a little bit of time with his friends and a little bit of hay time before we rode this morning. Managed, and I'm assuming it was just because he was in so much pain and the grooming didn't feel good, but now he loves it. I had to slow it down so that you could see his cute little face when he got his good itchy spot scratched. In all fairness, Happy used to like to drink my coffee. Today, he was not a fan. So today I'm riding Happy in our bitless option, which is a thin line side pull. I like it a lot better than riding in his halter, which is what I was doing before for our bitless option, because I feel like it gives him just a little bit more direction as to which rein I'm asking him to give on, because it's more on the side of his face than on the bottom of his face or like under his chin. Um, I also like this side pull because you can put it on any bridle. It's just basically a nose band that you attach to any bridle that you want or any head stall and it's really cushy. So the nose band is really soft and it doesn't really seem like it hurts him at all to have the nose band. And he seems to prefer it. He rides better, I feel like, in the side pole than in a bridle.
So to warm up today, I'm doing the same thing I did last week where I'm working on a lot of lateral work and leg yields. We either do leg yielding or we do some circles or half circles where we spiral out a little bit and I ask him to move into my outside rein and move his shoulders over. So we do that at the walk, trot, and canter. It's not the best at the canter, but at the walk and trot, we're really making progress on getting him to kind of lift those shoulders and move them over. So that one was just a little bit harder for him. That's also his spooky side of the arena. So I was asking him to move over and what he normally does is he slams his shoulders over but then doesn't actually continue to move his whole body over. So I essentially had to close my outside rein and really make sure I stopped that shoulder movement so that he would actually move over and he did on that side. I'm not sure why he was swishing his tail and kicking so much. I'm assuming there was a fly under him because this didn't come back after he did this in the first part of our ride, so. But I was concerned about it while we were riding, for sure. I'm gonna ask him again to move over, and you see he totally just turns his shoulders and moves. and. I need to give him a little bit more guidance with that outside rein and to close that wall and say, no, no, let's move your whole body. And I do do that when I remember, but this ride really is going to be focused on the fact that I'm not actually closing that outside rein and pushing him into it as much as I should. I feel like this happened the last ride too, where like the first little bit of trot that I take off with him, he's kind of like, eh, I don't really want to stretch into the contact and I'm a little wishy-washy with my hands. So he always has that like first couple strides and he, he like blows out, sneezes, snorts, whatever you want to call it. And then he's like, oh, okay, I got it now. I'm, I'm a little warmed up through my back. I can, I can do what you're asking. So he looks to me way better here than he did in that first little clip. So the Monday of this week, so this would be Sunday, so almost a week prior to this, he had had a chiropractic adjustment, which really helped him through his pelvis and his hips. So I feel like even out of the stall on this ride, he looks way better than he did on the prior Sunday series ride that I posted. So I realized this, even though I'm sure Stephanie, my trainer, knew this way before I did, obviously, that his shoulders are the key to his canter transitions and to why they are so not great. So this ride and this week I've been working on him moving his shoulders over before I asked for the canter transition, and they haven't been perfect canter transitions, but they've been way better than the ones that I have filmed in the past, so I felt like that one looked really good. and. Here, we're just trying to warm him up a little bit at the canner, just a really quick, you know, couple laps of canner, and I think he looks really good. So that adjustment really did a lot for him in his hind end, which in turn made him much better at the canner.
This wagon wheel is meant to help me push Happy into my outside rein and to get him lifted and relaxed through the poles. And it's also meant to help him learn to relax at the poles because we're noticing now that he has a little bit of anxiety when it comes to the poles and pole work in general. So we wanna make sure we kind of work through that and get him relaxed going over these before we actually start doing real jumps. So what I really need to be doing throughout this wagon wheel is pushing him with my inside leg to my outside rein and getting his body curved around the circle. And then every time I come to a pole, mega release over the pole. And that should hopefully encourage him to stretch and to relax. Now, do I do that every time? No. And we just started this obviously the day prior since Stephanie set it up for our lesson on Saturday. So this kind of is a, a, a refresher of what we did yesterday or the day prior and kind of trying to figure it out on my own without somebody on the ground kind of reminding me to release. I'm really, really bad at releasing over jumps. And so we're starting this now over poles so that it's lower stress for happy and it can learn and it'd be a better experience for him. Happy is very sticky and weak to the left, so getting his shoulder perfectly great for a transition is really difficult. So even though he did hollow out there, I took what I could get and I felt like it wasn't a terrible transition. So we're into the canner and you know, he looks pretty good for his left lead canner. And as you can see, I'm not releasing over any of the poles and I'm just focusing on, I don't know what, I guess holding my horse together at the canter, which he does not need my help doing. I'm also, if you notice, um, holding more with my inside and kind of giving with my outside, which is really the opposite of what I need to be doing. And I think is why he kept falling out of that wagon wheel. So you'll see more that he's going to fall out of the wagon wheel more and more and more. And it's because I'm gonna keep pulling with my inside rein and keep my outside rein open. And then that's obviously where he's going to drift to because his hind end is going to be going out with the more inside rein that I use. So just keep watching throughout this ride, you'll see. Just so that everyone knows who's watching, every time I stop to walk, there's probably about a two to three minute walk break involved and then we go back into work. So I'm not just going from work to work to work. I'm just clipping out the walk clips because they're really boring to watch. So here I'm attempting to get Happy's shoulder out so that I can ask for a canter transition, but what I'm doing is pulling so much with my inside that it's causing his hind to cross over and his, my outside rein is kind of just somewhere, not really in a good location for him to really get a good foundation to get a canter transition. So that's why that one was so poopy. And then on top of that, as you can see, I, there was no real clear communication as to let's keep the circle going and keep round around the circle. And I feel like that's why he kind of split the log and kind of fell out around it and why he looks so long. And you see, I'm like pulling him to the inside and doing almost nothing with my outside rein. And he's just kind of getting longer and longer and more strung out and having a very difficult time staying in the circle. And here is one other thing that I noticed by watching this video is I'm really forward with my left shoulder, which I feel like is causing him to also be blocked in his left shoulder. So it's something that I need to be more aware of and stop doing because it's just totally leading and I feel like it's just our anatomies do mirror each other and I feel like it's part of why that shoulder is so braced um, to this direction right now.
And again, as you can see, I'm pulling him with my inside rein through that wagon wheel and really not doing anything with my outside rein. And so I'm getting more and more frustrated because I'm like, why is this not working? It was working really well yesterday in our lesson and today we can't even make it around the circle. And it's all down to the fact that I continue to pull him with my inside or reach over with my inside and totally leave my outside completely open and let him fall out through it. So I haven't realized that right yet. And right now I'm thinking he's not listening to my outside rein, but he is listening to my outside rein because he's falling into my outside rein that I'm leaving open for him. So it's funny because I remember at this part of the ride, I was getting really annoyed because I was like, how is this going so poorly? And it's really all down to how I was riding him and he was just doing what I was asking him. So oh, it'll get worse before it gets better in this ride. And here I think I started to think about the fact that my outside rein existed and didn't need to be pulled out so far because he was doing slightly better here. He still, I feel like, braced on that inside shoulder. I feel like I can see it and just how he's moving through this circle and he's not really fully relaxing over those poles. But he definitely looked a little bit better. So I do think I was providing him with a little bit better guidance than to the left, the other way that we were going through that wagon wheel. And then I just kicked him forward after the wagon wheel because I felt like he was kind of getting a little bit slow and sloppy through his trot. So um, I pushed him into a little bit of a faster cadence once we got out of the wheel. All right, a few things are happening here. As you see, I pull him as hard as I can with my inside rein, thinking he needs to move over. As I'm doing that, I'm shifting my balance to the outside. And you'll see here, once I ask for the canner again, my foot completely goes through the stirrup to my heel of my boot because all of my weight is in my right or my left side. He spooks over there at the standards because that's where he spooks when he starts to get nervous and anxious and doesn't really know what's happening or doesn't really want to be doing what has been asked of him, which here I think he's just like, I don't know what you're asking me and it's freaking me out. So then we go back to the trot and I think, okay, well, let me just get this trot going well, thinking, why are you not listening to my outside rein? Um, hello, he is listening to your outside rein. You're not using your outside rein. You're yanking him around there with your inside rein. So I think, well, he's not paying attention to me, so I'm gonna take him down here and we're gonna work on some right lead canter circles and I'm going to get him to stop blowing out the outside shoulder. And things start going well until I start only using my inside rein. And he continues to blow that shoulder out. And I think, why is he doing this? And he's probably asking the same question. Why is she doing this? And then he starts to get anxious, and so every time we come around to those poles, he looks at them and gets nervous, but I think he's doing it because he doesn't want to do the pole work and he's getting nervous over the pole work. Well, that's really not what's happening at all. And then that happened, which is not a shock to anybody. I was completely still pulling with my inside rein, had nothing on my outside, and he was left with literally nowhere to go but outside over that jump block. So after this, I decided, okay, well, we need to go back to the walk and we need to get this communication of move out to my outside rein from my inside leg down better. So I work on this both ways at the walk. We probably did about, honestly, like almost 10 minutes of this 
because I was so irritated that he wasn't listening to me. And in retrospect, in watching this, he was listening to exactly what I was telling him to do. I was just telling him incorrectly what to do. And I don't say this to mean that I'm the only reason that this is not going great. The horse does not actually have a lot of the strength to move laterally and hold himself like that, but I wasn't doing him any favors with how I was riding him there. So here I'm remembering, push him into my outside rein, give over the pole. Push him into my outside rein, give over the pole. And he starts to actually take up a little more contact and try to stretch over his back because he's actually starting to understand what I'm asking and I'm not throwing him off balance by yanking my inside rein. So now that I'm actually paying attention to pushing him into my outside rein and giving over each one of these pulls, he's starting to ride a lot better. Now there, there was probably a slight miscommunication between me and him, and that's why I pulled him and dragged him back into it. But he's starting to look so much better, and it just all really was down to I needed to push him out through that circle and to give him the better balance that he needed to go over these poles and to actually start to relax over the poles and to be more supple and not have the anxiety and you can just look at his expression he just looks so much happier going through this and like oh i understand what's happening now So here we have a breakthrough moment where I am actually riding this kind of how I rode on my lesson and he's starting to really relax or like look he's looking and chewing through the circle so he's clearly processing what we're doing. He's like oh okay back to the correct way of riding this and over every pole I'm remembering let go and then ask him to move over and then let go. I didn't let go there but there, I let go and he really starts to really stretch and you'll see this coming soon. And I have to say when I was writing this, he really started to kind of just tootle along around the circle. Like he was just like, all right, this is what we're doing. I'm really balanced and I'm just gonna keep driving towards each one of these poles, which was not how we started this ride. And this horse is just a, a saint. I just, I'm just impressed every time I ride him and he does things like this where he's like, oh yeah, we're just gonna trot real relaxed over this, like, thanks for figuring yourself out. Oh, he's such a good boy. Oh my god.
Okay, so now we're going to try it at the right leg canner, which he's more balanced at anyways. Um, it goes a little bit better, so uh, I'll come back in once we start cantering the wagon wheel. So even on his more balanced lead, which is his right lead, he's still not super balanced. So I do have to use a little bit of my inside rein, but I'm trying really hard here to give with my reins over the poles and use more of my outside leg instead of my inside rein to get him around. But see, look here, I pull him with my outside rein or my inside rein and he totally comes to a trot. So clearly you don't want to use your inside rein on this exercise. You want to use your outside rein and push from the inside leg to the outside rein and you want them to be more balanced and standing up on that shoulder as they go around the circle and as you get them to be more standing up and to be more balanced they're going to start to want to naturally hunt the circle because they're going to be already primed that way physically like he is right now almost going without me having to help him get around that circle and so we ended up cantering out of that just because he started to get really tired. I mean, this was after we had been riding already for about 30 minutes, but he just did so much better and he looked so much more relaxed through the canter doing that. So now we're going to switch to the left left direction and um, I don't canter to the left just because he is more um, unbalanced and he's getting tired. So I didn't want to push it with him. So we ended up ending on this circle here, on this left um, trot circle. He was doing so well, and I was doing much better as well. So I was trying to give over each pull. I was trying really hard not to use my inside rein, and I was trying to just let him relax through the circle. And as you can see, the more that we do this circle, the more that he really starts to relax and lift over his back and through these poles, and just looks like he's like, tootling along again down the rail or something not actually going over like what I feel like can be a complex situation so here look how much he starts to stretch towards this pole and just act like this is no big deal so this was really a great accomplishment for both of us and mainly really for me to remember to use the correct aids for what needs to be asked of him and we ended up ending on this and he was just it was a great ride we I really learned a lot in this ride with him Okay, I can barely see myself, but that was a really good, really, really good ride. So this week we were working on a pinwheel and yesterday in our lesson, he was like an old pro at it. Like he was like, oh, I've done this a million times when I'm here to tell you Happy has not done this a million times, but he was so good. And my issue was that I was not releasing enough. So I've always known I've had this issue with fences. I usually release with my shoulders, but not my my um, hands, which I'll actually insert a picture of me jumping happy at my old barn where I'm doing exactly that. And it's horrifically bad, but I will post it in this video, like right now. And so, my advice, or the advice from Stephanie, my trainer, was to give as much as I could. Like, push my hands all the way up to his ears and just give at the canter. Because at the trot, I was giving pretty well. So today, we had a little bit of a issue going around it, especially to the right. I'm leaving the footage in of us jumping the mounting, or the block. I'm hoping that that made it on the pivot. So then we would kind of went back to scratch. He was a little bit blowing through my outside rain. I was also not really enforcing the outside rain. And today we're using the bit list because ultimately I would like to show him in jumpers and I would like to show him in the side pole because I think the side pole is legal. I haven't actually looked it up, but if it is, that's what I'm going to show him in. So I want him to be sensitive in it and he is sensitive in it for the most part. He's just not sensitive all the time. Um, what was I going to say? He's not sensitive all the time because he's never been really forced to be sensitive. My arm is getting tired. So 
we were riding in it today and I just really had to get big with asking him to move over when I pushed him into the rain. And I also needed to be better about closing the door for him as well on the outside rain. So when we jumped over the block, I stopped and we walked both ways and we worked on it. And I said, hey, when I say this, I mean this. And I got a little bit bigger about it. And I told him, you know, this is what we need to do. And then we went back at it at the trot. And I tried to let go as much as I could over each pole. And we got to a point where his nose was almost dragging the ground. He was stretching around the corners. I almost started crying because I was like, this horse is like just freaking phenomenal. I, there's times where I'm like, how did I get this horse for free? How was he such a busted good until like, I started riding with Stephanie and then we got him managed. It's just that it's, it shocks me. So then we cantered and the canter was good, but he was getting really tired. But God, he's such a great horse. Like I'm gonna cry thinking about it right now. Like even in that canter, he was like, I know what I need to do. I know what you're supposed to do. And when I started releasing, he's like, oh, we'll just keep cantering this circle. Like I don't need to stop even though I could tell he was dying. And we didn't canter to the left a second time because his trot was so good and he was stretching to the trot to the left to the left that I was like, you know what, let's just end on that and go for our cool out walk. So great ride. I am very emotional over this ride. I have been having these like once a month emotional rides, maybe once or twice a month, where it's like something just clicks and we just both get it and it's just it's so good. So Anyways, I'll do a little bit of our walk and let you see some more of the property. But yeah, we're cooling out now and <sighs> such a good ride. All right, we're cooling out. His legs today were way better. So, oh, there's Jackrabbit. I wonder if I can get the Jackrabbit. Oh boy, making people sick. Okay, made everyone sick. Um, So, I cold hose his legs, all four of them, for, I don't know, three to five minutes each. Really not that much long, probably, to make a difference. But I did that, and then I linamented his legs, and today they were just slightly puffy. Kind of his normal puffiness for when he rides anyways. Even his back legs looked better, so I think I'm going to keep doing that. I think the SMBs are really helping his legs, too. And I just ordered, well, I didn't order, but my friend had an extra pair that she wasn't using that are black. So I asked her if I could buy those from her because they were brand new, essentially. So she's gonna send them to me and then we'll have some sport medicine boots to use when we go show. Because we can use boots in the jumper ring. And I'm really excited for that because right now Stephanie is being kind enough to let us borrow her, her um, sports medicine boots, but I'd like to not ruin them for her. So we'll be using the black ones. This is what I mean. Do you see how close these planes are? That's insane. This is why it's dangerous for us to ride around here. Anyways, great, great end to the weekend. Great ride. Just, this horse couldn't be more amazing. When people tell me standard breads can't be sport horses, I'm just gonna laugh in their faces from now on because you know what? Mine can, and mine is. Peppers, you agree, right? He's like, I do whatever you want, lady. I do whatever you want. Lovely.
get gross. I don't have anything for you. <laughs>